If you haven't heard about Anchor, it is the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. Lawful Stupid just jumped over. First of all, it's free, and we love that. Secondly, there's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer, wherever you're at, on the go. Anchor will also distribute your podcast for you. There are a lot of other vendors out there, a lot of platforms that they will make sure your podcast gets to. So it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. And you can make money from your podcast with zero, I say again, with zero minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. So download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hey everybody, welcome to Lawful Stupid. Uh, the next few episodes you'll be hearing today, tomorrow, and the third day, depending on when they're released, which I think will be Friday, Saturday, Sunday, are going to be character episodes introducing our characters for Campaign 3. Welcome to Campaign 3. And so we have our first uh, character episode here, and I'm going to let Abon introduce her character briefly, and then we will just jump right into this character's uh, one-shot episode. All right. Uh, well, I'll start off with her name first. Her name is Beatrice Haven. She goes by Miss B. Uh, she is a twilight elf. She's got purple lilac-y skin, white hair, and uh, a couple horns on her head. Kind of very antler-like. Uh, she, I can dig it. Yeah. And her outfits normally consist of wearing either black and yellow dresses or blue or brown and yellow dresses. <laughs> like Pretty a fancy. Bumblebee. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So what we're going to do is e- each of these episodes is going to kind of walk through this transition of our characters becoming part of the KNG, which you will um, I, I will undoubtedly think of the Russian mafia style esque, uh, but that's not that's not all the some we're doing <laughs> KNG. It'll come out later. Um, and so let's get started. So first part is going to be a day in the life of Miss... And what do you want to be called? Miss Beatrice? Miss Behaven? Miss... <laughs> Miss B. Miss B. Day in the life of Miss B. And our scene will open up with Miss B in her homeland. Uh, this is the home of the the very elusive, um, rare to see Twilight Elves. And we open up with Miss B and her husband to be named... And they are perhaps sharing a meal or just spending some quality time together. Uh, Yeah, we'll be out in the garden in the our little patio. Yeah, I don't know, like a little uh, what's the thing called? Uh, Pavilion. Here we go. Mm. Uh, And there's like fancy flowers around the thing where it's wrapping up vines. Uh, It smells great. Uh, The bees are kind of asleep because it's later in the evening. (laughs) <laughs> okay, so it's a sun setting, kind of a kind of later in the afternoon as you're winding down from the day's activities. Yeah, I think that's our cue. Yeah, be married. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's a lovely day outside, isn't it, honey? Yeah, the weather's been very pleasant. The dogs have been running about like crazy. Have you seen a? For, for some reason, I'm imagining like dog bees, but that's just. <laughs> My mind getting too over imaginative. Cannon just became cannon, and they they bark <laughs> like it's just, it's like bah, 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 bah. <laughs> <laughs> they do the whoop whoop sound. <laughs> uh, well, a little uh, Sir Micron over there, he's just being crazy like usual. Sir Micron is crazy every day. That's that's what Sir Micron does. What an elegant beep up. Well, thank you for getting this little picnic meal together. Yeah, I'd cooked all day and thought it was a good chance to catch up since you've been busy working. I I keep telling you, you should stop. Your bones are getting too old right now, honey. (laughs) Well, you know, it's uh, it's always good to take a moment and just come out and enjoy the fresh air. And you know what? Uh, Speaking of that, I'm going to reach over and pluck a couple of the flowers and bring them over and say... I got these for you, honeybee. 
Mm. Oh, that's cheesy. That's from my own garden. <laughs> that doesn't make it any less. <laughs> oh, you're too good to me. Well, I gotta be good in some way. Can't just be an old guy hanging out. Uh, a little description, like in this moment, Neo Haven, uh, her husband. He's uh, what in his late eighties, a uh, human man. I'll let you imagine whatever he wants to look like. Hot, <laughs> just rippling muscles. Yes. Um, <laughs> he he brought Drizzling honey to the party. With sweat for no reason. <laughs> brought honey to the party but most of it is on him <laughs> <laughs> oh my <laughs> no, no. it's hard work getting all these flowers you know <laughs> <laughs> and I, th- I think that's most of our scene huh okay so you spend so that day is is, is very pleasant and, and there are several days that you guys spend together um toward the end like this where you're just at the end of the day relaxing able to share a meal together and just bask in each other's presence. Thank you, Ginge, for your guest episode on this, the first <laughs> character episode of C3. This is Ginge, always, always here for really bad ad-libbing. <laughs> no, it was beautiful. <laughs> 10 out of 10. All right. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> so we flash now over to uh, some time later, a year, two years, five years, you name it. But for whatever reason, Miss B, you've you've come into contact with a, a group of, of other elves, uh, maybe sun elves, maybe the moon elves, who have, have found your domain that has been hidden from basically the entire world um, for the past several generations. Both sides hate you because you're a combination of, of both the sun and the moon elves. Um, both hate each other and as such, both hate the twilight elves. And so, this group comes to you, and they threaten pretty much your entire existence. Your your husband, your lovely husband, your kids, your grandkids. And so, we'll open this scene with, we'll say, a messenger from the Sun Elves, who comes to you specifically one day while you're working in your garden, and no one else is around. And you hear him before you, you see him you're aware of his presence um well miss b likes to wear long boots and if i hear him before i see him she'll probably bring out one of her daggers since (laughs) uh she wouldn't be expecting anybody at this time uh from her boot now now. protective stance no need uh, to 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 cause violence uh you're unwelcome here in my garden. Why are you here? And so he's kind of had his hands up uh, as if to stop you from if you were going to like thrust thrust a dagger at him and he sees that you're not and so he looks around at the flowers all around you and he picks one up, just a, a beautiful uh, yellow one that's there and sniffs it kind of uh, looks up into the sun that's shining brightly and says Well, we've been looking for your people for some time. Well, you have found us. That's not great. Why are you here? Besides being just looking for us. Well, I thought it might be better if I was here before my people stormed in and just simply wiped you off the map, as it were. She looks at him calmly uh, and she- she just I, I don't think that's going to happen sir what is your name dear before I before I get to the really good news uh only my friends get my name and you're clearly marking yourself as not a friend and you wouldn't be too far off my name is Jern and I am one of the top representatives for the the, the most beautiful of elves, the Sun Elves. I've been sent here on on a very diplomatic mission to let you know that we'll be occupying this grove, this grotto, this beautiful place that you've grown for us. Uh, How about a no? That (laughs) we've worked hard for this area and this is our home. 
It's very good. I, I love what you have to say. The problem is I, I didn't come to so much debate about the taking over. Simply to tell you, you have six months, we'll say, to gather your things, get your family, and find a new home. I feel like you won't even allow that since you've stated you want to destroy all of us. Oh, abso- I do, absolutely. But it wouldn't look good, wouldn't bode well for the Sun Elves altogether. You see, we have a, a pact of with the Moon Elves ugh, to leave each other alone, and that includes you. But our homeland has been taken over by barbarians, and so we've been forced out. And we found you. Uh, you can go find somewhere else. There's plenty places around here. You can no, even no, move no. over a town. No, no, no. You see, people just like they hate you hate us as well. That's where we have what we have in common. And I don't have much more time to debate. Simply, I'm telling you, you should get out. While I, yes, would want you destroyed, my king won't allow it. But he will give us permission to get rid of you if you're not gone in six months' time. <laughs> uh, yeah, over my dead body. And then she'll, like, try to make a lunge for it. So he sticks out his hand. In the middle of his hand is, like, this orange jewel and a bright light immediately, almost reflecting the sunlight into your eyes and into the surrounding area. Uh, it's so bright it knocks you to the ground. And when you are able to see, when your eyes come back to being able to blink and look around, you don't see him. But you hear the, his voice say, Six months. And so we'll shift now. It's some few days later, and you haven't told Neo about your encounter. Not yet. You're too afraid to. You are worried about how he will get worried. He's he's in his older age now, and you don't want to put that kind of stress on him. You think you can figure it out. And you're out maybe in the garden. I don't know. Where do you go when things get stressful? If she's not wanting to talk to him just yet about everything, uh, she'd probably walk around town and probably head towards where, I guess, I don't know, the elders... Because she's relatively young for an elf. And I imagine she actually might have said in passing to them what happened. Because it's all of them problem. Yeah, I I like that. So you've gone to where the elders for the Twilight Elves, um, where they meet, whether that be daily, weekly, uh, and just concerning the issues. And so you've brought this up to the council. And of Mm -hmm. course, they've promised to not say anything to the village. They don't want to to worry anyone, of course. Um, but as you are traveling back the 15, 20, 25 minute walk to your own abode, which is often filled with uh, trees, um, lush gardens on either side, there are times when you are often alone. It is one of these times when someone who is in a clean suit and sunglasses, a black suit and tie, um, steps out of seemingly like a tree. Steps outside of it just it, it, from this wood line. No twigs or brush on him at all. God, another one. <laughs> no, I, I, I come in peace. Oh, the last one threatened me and my home. We know. Um, before I get there, I have something. That may interest you. You are Beatrice Haven, correct? She'll look at him really confused. Like, how would you even know that? I know a lot more about you than you probably do. And those, that's a good thing. I'm from an organization that seeks to take the bad things in this world things that maybe are misunderstood before their time or even outdated beyond what they should be. Things that could destroy the world we live in today. 
and it's my job and the, the job of those who work in my field to ensure that those things don't harm the things and people that we love. And so we've seen over the past few years your skills and your abilities come to life. Not to complete fruition, but come to life. We think you would be a great candidate to join us, the KNG, in stopping those threats. Including the one on my home. Miss Beatrice, I can more than guarantee that any problem you might have, we can make it disappear. Now, I don't want you to misunderstand me. I don't want you to join because you are getting something in return. What I'm telling you is we would like for you to join and that we will make sure that your family, your loved ones are taken care of as a result. When do I have to have my answer for you? I will find you in one week's time. If you give me a yes, at that, then I will tell you at some unmentioned time, on un, un, timeline I can't give you, you'll have X amount of time to prepare your family without telling them what you've been discussed here with me. Just that you may have to go on a trip or whatever it might be, and we'll we'll take care of the rest. And if you should say no, well, then of course we have to help you forget that we exist, and you can go on about your life. I will I will think it over. So one week from now. One week from now. And so he um, he kind of disappears into the woods just behind like maybe a, the first set of trees on the right side of this path. And you see a bright light like shoo, just really quickly. And then the woods are as quiet as they were when you started walking down the trail back to your home. So a week passes by, sort of in a similar fashion, you find yourself on that same trail because you are expecting this individual to show up again. And you thought your answer over. And mm-hmm. just like before, he kind of appears out of the woods, same, same individual, a clean suit, sunglasses. He says, um, Beatrice, have you decided? Yes. Okay. And what have you decided on the behalf of KNG? Uh, I'll be joining you to help out. Simple as that. What do you need from us? I need my home to be taken care of from the Sun Elves since they seem to pose a threat. Um, to my people here. Um, as no. long as they're all safe and happy um, and no harm to their heads, then I'll be happy to be wherever we are. Safety we can provide. Happiness? Well, that's <laughs> one's own endeavor. Well, close to it then. Any other requests? Um, none, none that I have thought of. Uh, this, uh, she kind of looks back to where her home is. She she looks at the guy and she's like, uh, the problems that I don't think you need to worry about. It's fine. He sort of nods almost knowingly. He says, understood. Moving forward. We're going to give you some time to get your affairs in order. You have at least a month. But you won't know when we're coming back for you. Can't tell you that. What I will tell you is you need to have your affairs in order. Meaning, talk to your loved ones. Don't tell them, I'm going away. Spend time with them. Make sure that you're in the moment with them. Because these are going to be the last moments you have. But know... That you're doing it for a great reason. And because your family 
is one of thousands of families, millions of families in the world who need protecting from the things that you will be protecting them from. Do you have any final questions? No, I'll ask them when we meet up again. Okay. Thank you. And so then he just turns, heads back into that wood line. The, the, you see the light briefly, loud pop. Gone again. And so the last scene we have is over the, the next one to two weeks. Um, let me ask you this. Would Beatrice, when she heard you have a month, would she take that literally like, I only have a month? Or would she think, I can take my time. Maybe I have a little more time. Um, she'll have it kind of like a month as this should be the set time and any other day extra after that is a blessing to have. Okay, so here's here's the last scene you have. You've been spending more time, uh, of course, with Neo, a lot more time, and things are going well. Um, but he's he's getting old, and, and suddenly he's kind of taking a turn for the worst. Um, but he's still getting around. He just seems more frail than normal. And I'd say about two months have passed, and so every day after a month, you've just been there by his side, loving him through it all and each night that you go to bed and he's laid down and you can hear his breathing sometimes it's a little more labored you know hoping mm-hmm. is you know maybe he'll go in peace or I, I i don't know if i can go what's the conversation you have as he's asleep there what do you what do you say to yourself or what do you say to him thinking that tomorrow could be the day they come and get you I feel emotional now. <laughs> um, she'll lean over him um, and just kind of like run her fingers through his hair while he sleeps. Just because she's an elf, she gets, what, half the sleep <laughs> that she normally mm-hmm. needs anybody else. Um, and she'll just run her fingers through his hair and just kind of admire him um, internally, just tell him things because she doesn't want to wake him up um, that she loves him Um, if she's gone I hope he knows that it's uh, not because of him Uh, but he is worth more than the sun and the stars combined alright and so you fall asleep that night and it is the next day you are traveling your normal route perhaps back to to town in the twilight elves arena of living to to get some supplies and you hear a rustling in the bushes and you're right in that same tree line and it's the same guy who's come out of the woods several times and he says to you it's time and he holds up a device. Uh, you're not sure what it looks like. And you're probably all thinking the men, uh, men in black <laughs> memory forgetter <laughs> thing. And you wouldn't be too far off. And he presses a button and a bright light fills your eyes. And that's where we're in this episode. Ah, oh, nuts. <laughs> all right. <laughs> hey, everybody. Thanks for listening. This has been the first episode of uh, campaign three we'll I'll say first episode first character episode of campaign three um you got two more really good ones coming up uh tomorrow and the following day we hope you're pumped for episode one coming out on monday and uh can't wait to see you then abon do you have any final words for the fans uh i'm excited to be here and i'm ready to get this game rolling it's gonna be a lot of fun <laughs> we hope hashtag we hope <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye.